Hey folks, welcome to Drive Across Texas. I'm Pat Waters. Today we're in Hearn, Texas, Robertson County, at Camp Hearn World War II Historic Site and Exhibit, and we're speaking with Melissa Freeman. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Great, thank you so much for allowing us to come out here and, and check this wonderful historical site of the great state of Texas. It's our pleasure. Now, how long have you been out here? I've been out here for almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years in the fall. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't mind, tell the viewers exactly what Camp Hearn is and, and what it all existed of back in the, you know, the early 40s. Sure. Uh, this camp was a POW camp. That means prisoner of war. And it was home to uh, prisoners from all three Axis powers. German prisoners primarily, but we also had Italian prisoners. And right at the end, we had Japanese prisoners, which is unique. Uh, there are very few camps that could claim all three. Um, the camp opened in May of 1943 and initially was home to guys from the Africa Corps. It was primarily an NCO camp, uh, meaning sergeants and corporals, which as a result meant that we had more Nazis, hardcore Nazis than most camps did. And because we had a, a Nazi influence here, rather powerful though small Nazi influence, the Nazis took over inside the three big prisoner compounds and the result was a lot of drama, or the process and the result was a lot of drama in this camp. People that got captured, they bring them over here. They, right. they, you know, they took pretty good care of them over here. They took wonderful care of them. Uh, the United States was determined to observe the Geneva Convention uh, to the letter and, and maybe even bend over backwards a little bit. Uh, we thought that if we treated their prisoners very well, they would treat our prisoners very well. Um, whether that happened or not, uh, we don't really know. I, I do have one story of a time when, when Rommel met a former guard personally <laughs> and thanked him very graciously. So uh, uh, we know that some people appreciated what happened to the prisoners here. Uh, but anyway, that was our policy and uh, our motto was do unto others. And so they were fed very well. They were fed as well as our own troops. Uh, they were paid if they worked and even paid a little bit if they didn't work uh, so they could buy things in the canteen. They were allowed to express themselves artistically. They made fountains, they painted paintings, they created theaters, they created music venues. Uh, we started with Rommel's regimental band and they sort of formed the core of orchestras in every compound. We had three small orchestras. We had bands in every compound. Uh, prisoners could get instruments from the uh, YMCA and some of them made their own. So uh, there was a, a lot of music out here. Sometimes the orchestras would combine and invite the Hearn folk in. So the Hearn folk got to, got to hear. Uh, a lot of paintings were done here. They did statues. They could make anything they wanted to make as long as they could make it from wood cloth or concrete. So uh, the, a lot of the plays had very elaborate costumes from donated material. We had a really good tailor out here. Uh, we even have pictures, uh, picture, one picture of one of the orchestras performing in dinner jackets. Still to this day, you are finding artifacts that are what, six to eight inches below the ground? Yes, yes, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so yesterday, an old toothpaste tube was turned in, one of the a toothpaste tube that's probably 75 to 77 years old. Uh, <laughs> and a lock, a padlock, which was really cool. I did a lot of investigation of that padlock. And uh, things just turned up. We had a guy who brought in a, a service medal, an Italian-German service, service medal from the Africa Corps yesterday, which wasn't dug up. It's one that he had found now, now online. Who who does all the excavating right now? Is it just people in town? Just or do you people, got people? people in town who want to do it. Yeah, it's not official. That's neat. <laughs> but they bring stuff into us, so. We're yeah, fine. and that's good. I mean, you mm -hmm. want it to sit in here and be restored where, you know, future right. generations can see. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how many acres was this compound? This was uh, 710 acres. So it was huge. It was huge, yes, it was huge. I know you've got a map over here of the actual entire compound. How many right. buildings were here? There were uh, 250 in the original plan, but I think there were a couple that were actually added. So I'm thinking there were about somewhere between 250 and 255 actually. And none of them standing except the pump houses. The pump house, the well house, which the city extensively changed. <laughs> and then the, the original water tank is still here. 
There's a huge footprint though. Uh, when you go through the woods on our trails, uh, you see lots of foundations, you see lots of remains of fountains because these, these Germans went fountain building crazy. Uh, they probably built uh, as many as 12 fountains, some very simple, some pretty elaborate. And we have the remains of those, plus we have pictures of the more elaborate ones as well. Listen, well, I know this uh, Camp Hearn set kind of idle for years, and uh, so I know there had to be some interest from maybe some political parties or, or different things like that to get this brought back up to the surface where people could learn about it. Uh, yeah, who was instrumental in spearheading that? Well, Chet Edwards, our congressman for many, many years, was actually the most influential in, in getting the initial grants for us and getting this, this building built, the uh, building across the street renovated, and eventually the, uh, the guard tower being built. So uh, we owe Chet Edwards a great debt of gratitude. Well, that's good. That's good. Is anybody else that, that comes to mind, or is he just, I know you've got the board and, and all right. that. Of course, that goes without saying. You know, those yeah. people obviously have a passion for it and uh, it's kind Our of board, labor we love for them. We have a very dedicated board. Of course, uh, the guy who did the archaeological dig, uh, Dr. Mike Waters, had a tremendous amount to do with creating this exhibit and getting interest renewed in the camp. So, oh, that's great. Dr. Mike Waters from Texas a and So, Ms. Freeman, you've been out here 10 years and I've, I've got to ask you the question, what's your favorite thing about Camp Hearn? Well, actually, I like the trails best. <laughs> But that's just because I like to hike a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, another really fun thing for me is we have uh, children that come out here. And we have a video that's from the History Channel, so that's very instructive and a lot of people really like that. But we also have helmets in the back. And uh, we really enjoy having the kids try on the helmets. They have a lot of fun with that. So we have a, a German helmet and American helmets. And uh, we have a Japanese helmet out here, but it's kind of stuck to the wall, so well, <laughs> they don't usually get to try that one on. But I, I love talking to the kids, giving them sort of an overview of World War II. But I just like hiking the trails because I'm a hiker. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, it's really, you can tell that you spend a lot of time. It's got to be a labor of love for you if you're very educated about Camp Hearn and uh, all the history that entails. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've got one more question for you. I see all these displays. And, uh, what is your favorite thing that you have on display? Well, probably the canteen, uh, although uh, uh, I do like, we have a canteen that's an example of trench art and it's really interesting. Uh, but we, we receive things fairly often. Uh, we're about to get a lot of paintings that we haven't previously had. And we just recently got some things from a German soldier whose son sent his Camp Hearn collection back to us. He sent his tennis racket, that he, an American issued tennis racket that he played with while he was here. And I really like the tennis racket and the, the bag with the balls in it. He sent all that back. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah, it is. You know, I know, I mean, you can tell that there's a lot of uh, labor that goes into keeping this up. And um, you know, I'm curious who is the Historical Society or the county on this and maintain it? Uh, neither. Okay. We, we are a 501c3, we're a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and uh, our, uh, the lady in charge, the lady who's over our board, our executive, uh, was the head of the Robertson County Historical Foundation at one time. And it was in that capacity that she decided to develop Camp Hearn. Now, what do y'all do? Uh, any particular events or grants that allow you to fund what y'all do? What do y'all do on that? Well, we actually have an annuity from one of our former guards. Uh, when he passed away, he, he left us some money that, and we're able to uh, uh, draw on that in time to trouble. Uh, we, we also get some money from the city of Hearn. We get a, a portion of the hotel motel tax. We've gotten grants from, uh, from the state of Texas and we have received several grants from Union Pacific. They've been very good to us. I want to take this opportunity to commend you and the committee on bringing this back to life. I mean, I think it's something yeah. that uh, future generations definitely need to know, especially in Robertson County here. This is uh, a great facility and a uh, great piece of history. It's also a great learning tool for these young kids right. to know exactly the struggles and the trials and tribulations that, that people went through and, and uh, you know, during the war. It's, it's right. not an easy time for anybody. 
but uh, thank you so much for your hospitality. And thank you. I appreciate you. you coming out and letting us come out here and invade your privacy and <laughs> check out Camp Hearn. Okay. All right. Come anytime. We'll dang sure do it. We'll try to see some folks your way. <laughs> folks, I'm telling you, if you're ever in Robertson County in Hearn, Texas, you need to pull by the World War II historical site exhibit here on Camp Hearn. It's phenomenal. It's a great piece of Texas history, great piece of world history. I think it's something that uh, you'll be intrigued by. Now, if you got some expendable capital, they are a 501c3 organization, so I'm sure they will take donations so we can continue to show our future generations exactly what went on here in this great state of Texas. Y'all remember now, that baby's coming from a Texan.